Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Prabhu, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hare Krishna. Thank you for joining us this morning and we welcome all the devotees. We didn't recognize the name over here. Uh, so I was just looking. Thank you for joining Prabhuji and Mataji. So it is our distinct pleasure. Yes, uh, let me see if I can I think be able to unmute. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. It is our distinct pleasure to uh, welcome His Grace Dwarkadesh Prabhu and Her Grace Vishaka Priya Mataji. Uh, they have visited our Tobago temple many times before, at least a number of times, and we have had the, the pleasure of meeting them in person. They're a very dynamic uh, couple and have, uh, have inspired thousands and thousands of devotees in Krishna consciousness. Uh, Dwarkadesh Prabhu is a physician, he's, he's a doctor, and he's also, I believe, one of the board of directors on the Bhaktivedanta Hospital. Uh, but in addition to their preaching and their, uh, you know, helping so many devotees out in, uh, you know, understanding relationships and family values, and they've given many, many seminars across the world. They're also very active in writing, producing, and directing dramas, uh, which are very beautifully done. And in, in Mumbai, they're, I mean, they're world famous. You can, you can, uh, you can uh, catch them if you're in Mumbai. Uh, and they do produce some, some of the one of the, some of the nicest dramas you've ever seen. So without uh, wasting too much more time, I would like to request, uh, you know, uh, His Grace Nilmani Prabhu to uh, welcome them and also the introduce tonight, uh, this morning's topic. Nilmani Prabhu, go ahead. Well, thank you, Gopal Prabhu. So again, we've already introduced them. So just wanted to offer my gratitude to Dwarkadish Prabhu and Vishaka Mataji for taking this time and the evening on Saturday evening. I know on Saturday evening there are many other programs and sanghas and uh, preaching activities that they're usually busy with, but somehow they were able to free up some time for our sangha. So we're very, very happy to have them. And this is actually a very, very wonderful topic as slowly the uh, grip of coronavirus is uh, you know, being relaxed and we're being uh, you know, allowed to uh, resume programs or go out into the community, go out and meet other people. So this, I think, uh, topic uh, is going to help us um, learn how we can build our immunity so that when we do go out and we, you know, we are meeting and resuming people, um, we become immune enough so, so that you know, we become just more resilient to any of these kinds of things, but not only from a medical perspective, but also from a spiritual perspective. So I think it's a wonderful topic and I'm very grateful again for Dwarkadish Prabhu and Mataji to join us today. So thank you so much. Mike is yours, Prabhu. So, uh, so I want to thank Nilmani Prabhu and the Vaishnav Sangha devotees who are all there. I we don't have the privilege of seeing them in person, but my dandavas to all of them for uh, giving us this blessed opportunity to serve them in uh, this time of need. So thank you and let's get started off with our topic, uh, <coughs> the GPS for immunity. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine. Nirvishesha Shunivadi Paschata Desh Tarane Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Pavunityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Srivasti Kaur Bhakta Vinda Vancha Kalpataru Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyakevacha Patita Nam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namunamaha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Rama Yes Prabhu so Yes Prabhu so we're going to speak on uh, the, this unprecedented, unprecedented problem which is now. Hare Krishna. Are we, are we audible? It sounds like we are 
two devices at the same time which is causing an echo yeah yeah one second pretty close that now can you hear us properly yeah we can hear you you can also see you very clearly now it's very good i will see you properly no no we are able to also see we are seeing you and yeah. hearing you very clearly. it's much better okay yes so gps stands for of course we know global positioning systems uh <clears throat> that's our goal that's where we want to reach and uh, it's a destination because that destination is the privileged destination we all want to reach because that's the true answer to this pandemic <clears throat> we are going to call this as global principles of survival gps right and being prabhupada nugas followers of shri prabhupada uh, we are reminded of uh propads desire for all of us his uh, sincere followers <clears throat> when he wrote the manifesto for iskon especially the uh, sixth purpose of iskon we can remember that today is uh, very relevant to today's pandemic situation to bring the members closer together the purpose of teaching a simpler and more natural way of life how powerful is that the prabhupad in right there in 66 sitting in matchless gift could <clears throat> could understand that the more people learn to live a more simpler and natural way of life it will automatically result in health right and the more we have disconnected from that particular ideal from that golden ideal we have moved away from that standard of prabhupad's teachings and therefore the world <clears throat> at large is suffering of what is suffering right now so uh, we know that probhat being merciful to us he was always concerned about our health uh, he would write down in the last of every letter the thousands of letters he wrote to thousands of his disciples your wish this meets you in good health your ever wisher swami prabhupad right so probhat loves us all and in giving us even the basic principles of krishna consciousness which is the four heritage principles is also not just a principle of morality and spirituality but ingrained within that four regs itself is a system of health is it not true that people like us who are following that are at a greater advantage in terms of health than our counterparts who are less unfortunate less fortunate than us who probably are victims of these four habits and they stand uh, much more on a weaker platform as to facing uh, disease and corona uh, so which we are actually much better so devotees we are we are happy we are grateful that we have prabhupada teachings which have guided us so far right i like to uh, start with a small story of uh, a school, uh, which you may have heard even as a small child maybe 5 7 years old of the clever crow <laughs> you remember the clever crow story that uh, it is a it is a dry day the parts land maybe desertic and the crow is looking for some water to drink he is getting dehydrated he is getting choked up parched up right and moving around a lot he sees just a pitcher of water right <clears throat> but to his uh, dismay the water is far too deep inside and putting his beak inside is not able to reach and pull out the water but our friend the crow is not disappointed he is not hopeless right <clears throat> he doesn't give up which is very important you don't get into that negative mindset but he started looking for ways to get rid of the problem right he wanted to make every adversity into you know as a, an opportunity so he found some pebbles around and said this is a good idea he took the pebbles and one by one one by one one by one put it in the jar the water rose up and there you are he had the water right so we are not able to get to the bottom of this disease that's the problem that's a fact right and therefore we need to raise the level of the water what does it really mean is that we want to find a solution in such a way whereby we can raise the level of water which means we raise the level of our immunity correct so our ancestors were probably better off than us in this regard as far as immune is concerned because our ancestors uh, breathed better air had better water to drink had better quality of food and they worked hard 
right? Now, living in a digitalized world, a technologically driven world, we probably have lost the advantages which our ancestors had. And therefore, we may live probably longer than them, but we don't have the quality of life which they had. And we are ridden with far more diseases, uh, acute and chronic, what we call as diseases of civilization, right? So uh, let's start off and think, now what is really immunity? What is immunity? And we all of us have some vague understanding, sure, I'm sure, but let's be a little more specific and define it properly. In simple terms, it is basically a, a preventive and repair mechanism of the body, correct? <clears throat> so uh, we're gonna talk about this uh, in some detail. Uh, we start with the gross platform first, the level of the body, the immunity of the body. Then we go to the more subtle levels. We're going to talk about immunity of the mind, right? Which is also important for us. And we're going to talk about how to <coughs> immunize our soul because we exist at three levels. We exist at the level of the body, we exist at the level of the mind and the soul. Like Krishna exists at the level of Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. So we exist at the level of the body, mind and soul. And so we'll have to deal with all these three things in getting a comprehensive overall solution to the problem and not just some patchwork, you know, things like that. So let the function of immunity is specifically three in nature. First is repairing work. Our body goes through lots of wear and tear and every tissue which gets worn out because of use or overuse or even abuse or a trauma or an accident or internal injury or a surgery or some cuts and wounds or whatever else goes on inside, <clears throat> all the genetic material gets damaged. So many things get damaged inside, right? So they have to be constantly, our body is a self-healing machine. We don't have to put anything inside, but the self-healing machine. So self-healing and repair, what we call in India as the uh, you know, PWD, Public Works Department. So that work is done by the immune system. Number two, we have toxic removal system or bio-based management in more technical terms, right? So you'll be amazed to know that our body is so complex. Krishna has made it so complex. I mean, no, no human brain can even fathom what Krishna has made in this body. But in one second, in one second, the body performs one, a 10 raised to 34 chemical reactions per second. Imagine the figure, 10 to 34 <laughs> reactions per second, right? So that's the unbelievable thing which is happening in our body. It's so complex it is. And therefore through all these reactions, what you call as metabolic reactions, uh, a lot of useful things are happening obviously, but like in any purificatory process, uh, you also produce some uh, unwanted stuff, which we which call in common language as toxins. And in medical language, we call it as uh, reactive molecules or, detox. yeah. So therefore we would need some detoxification and that's done by the immune system. So that's the second function, detox. And the third function of course is defense, our police force, right? We are living in a world where we, we are partnering our lives with bacteria, viruses, funguses, parasites, and they are all there around us, right? And they will always be with us because 84 next species of our life are living to, uh, we are coexisting in the same planet, in the same environment, right? So you have to live a life with them. And yet we want to have a coverage, a shield, which will protect us. So that internal security force is our defense system. This is the third function of the immune system. Now, specifically the way Lord has made it, he has made two systems. One is the innate system. I'm sure by now most of you are familiar with these names. Innate means inborn. We are born with that. Other is acquired, also sometimes called as adaptive. That means we come in contact with various antigens, various things, and we specifically create missiles and soldiers for specific function, a target against specific invaders. And you have a background, non-specific foundational system, which generally protects you in every way. Now, this is important because <clears throat> The virus, of course, is a uh, little new to us. Uh, we have adaptive, adaptive bacteria to uh, adaptive systems towards uh, many other antigens, but we have not had this virus in our life before. So we do not have 
adapt the system at all so we are depending and banking upon the innate system talking of immunity my dear friends uh, dear devotees uh, some questions are often asked to doctors and to all of us said prabhu um, i heard that cow urine is very good so can i drink cow urine what is your opinion on cow urine can i drink aloe vera juice can i take some avla powder uh, can i take uh, ghee is very good for immunity antioxidant so can i take desi ghee hand churned uh, made by desi cows from eto milk can i take ghee right so all these questions keep coming and different fads keep coming and going all over the world right so if the, if the question is asked to a doctor like myself i will say the answer as yes and no the reason being that yes because it will definitely give some benefit to you uh, if done under medical guidance i had a, I, i know of a person who actually was so fascinated by cow urine that he held a glass when the urine was just coming out of the cow's body and a whole glass he had and the moment he just drank it he fainted and collapsed so so we know of such cases as well where non medical approaches to cholesterol <laughs> uh, somebody we know people who had just ghee and ghee and ghee put ki ghee in everything there was no ghee not necessary and the cholesterol went to 350 right so all sorts of things are happening so we want medical guidance so the answer is the real answer is that yes these things are useful if, if done in under medical guidance but immunity is not a remedy immunity is not a remedy or a herb or a activity it is a state of balance right a sense of balance achieved by a proper balanced lifestyle so if you want patchwork solutions they are there you take this and that and this and that but if you want something really concrete for a long term to face not just the corona which is of course our immediate concern but we are long term concerns because viruses will be there and other diseases are there waiting for us right we want a long term solution we need to get into what we call as a balanced lifestyle right and the balanced lifestyle is what this also talks about uh, those who have read the gita a little more deeply know that of the 700 good verses the lord has spoken 100 verses deal with lifestyle right so of course the most famous words krishna has which we all uh, hear and quote many times is from the sixth verse sixth chapter rather yukta har viharasya yukta cheshtasya karmasu yukta sapava bodhasya yogo bhavati dukha ha right so this is obviously a lifestyle verse one of the most prominent verses in the gita which you all have heard talk and thought about he who is regulated in his habits of eating sleeping recreation and work can mitigate all material pains by by practicing the yoga system right so with this background dear friends let's get into a more deeper discussion now about what lifestyle would be our long term and short term answer to improving immunity right immunity is life right when immunity drops you decay you degenerate and eventually we die so the chinese believe that if you can have perfect immunity all the time you will not even die that's one of the one of the principles of chinese medicine anyway to make it concise and to make it understandable we have divided this uh, into five basic foundational principles right and is there something which you will understand very easily i assure you my dear friends that uh, maintaining health is not such a difficult thing as is made to be made, made made to be believed by doctors and medical professionals that it's so difficult to maintain health it is not difficult to maintain good health we just understand the underlying basic principles which govern our health so the first one i like to talk about is alignment aligning ourselves with the biological clock that's the first principle alignment with the biological clock and the key word to this particular foundational principle is the word yukta by krishna yukta means regulation a regulated lifestyle in accordance with our biological clock now what is biological clock <clears throat> let's make some 
let's talk about it for a while. We know the we know the time clock, twenty four hours time clock we have, right? And our body, being a part of nature, each and every cell of the billions of cells actually is programmed by some mystical power, right? Coming from the brain, whereby each cell has its own intrinsic clock of what it is supposed to do at what time. Every cell is governed by the super clock in the brain, called which is called as super chimeric, super chimeric, uh, some nucleus is there in the in the brain. <clears throat> so now, when we live our life in, in according to that particular principle, we are in harmony with nature, right? And therefore, uh, we wake up at a particular time, we eat at particular times because that's the time allotted. The, for example, ten to two is a good time to eat, right? The temperature regulation takes place. The hormones are released at a particular time. The detox takes place at a particular time. So, if you go up into that cycle of nature, automatically we are living in harmony with nature. The interesting observation is that for Iskonites, all of us to see that uh, in our in all our temples, our deities, our Lord, gets up at 4 a.m. and he sleeps and and he gives darshan at 4:30. And the Shanarthi is usually at 8:30, 9 o'clock. That's the time our Lord goes. To bed, right? So that actually is the real thing. That's the time which you know the time to really sleep and get up. We'll talk a little later about that as well, right? <clears throat> so the circadian rhythm or biological clock is uh, Prabhupada writes in the first chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam about regulation. He said because modern man leads a dysregulated life, that's the main reason why he becomes weak in shakti and his buddhi and his bala. Shakti buddhi bala becomes down because of this. And you know, Prabhupada was the upholder of this principle very strongly because he would sleep at a particular time, he would get up, and wherever he was in Japan, London, New York, Venice Beach, Juhu Beach, he would go for his morning walks. Correct? We know that one hour of morning walk would give him good sunlight in the morning. He would sleep at a particular time, he would have his you know, massage and his bathing, and then his you know, prasadam, all regulated. Bhagavan Thakur was immaculate in this regard. And People who work in night shifts, for example, they have a great disadvantage because when they work in night shifts, they actually go in a ultra cycle, right? And therefore, a reverse of the second rhythm is considered by modern science as a pre-cancerous potential situation, right? So very important to regulate a life as per the biological clock. Uh, logically, the next principle which comes up is the power of sleep. Sleep is a superpower as far as immunity is concerned. It's not just a rest mechanism, but actually it's one with highly immunogenic activity. They did experiments, of course, scientists keep on doing experiments and keep on revealing various truths. But they say that even just seven days of observation of people who are deprived of only two hours of their night sleep led to 70% decline in the immunological responses of the body. Now, how fantastic is that? That sleep deprivation which is very common among so many people, right? Of course, for mothers who have babies and for doctors, it's one thing to be sleep deprived. But for a normal man to keep on depriving his sleep uh, frequently uh, actually is directly uh, immunosuppressant activity, right? So, a body ultimately is a machine. Yantra Rodhani Maya. Yeah, we are yantras, we are machines, right? With the soul living within this machine, right? So, like you charge your mobiles, you charge your laptops, you charge your, you know, various electrical gadgets, right? The body goes through a lot of activity in the daytime and discharges energy to perform all its activities. And by night, it is the time to again recharge. So, what energy you will enjoy the next day is dependent on the quality and quantity of your charging activity in the night. Because you manufacture what is called as ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy molecule manufactured in the mitochondria of every cell of the body, right? So therefore, let's never think of sleep as a just uh, an act of laziness, but to think of it as a very important part of uh, a healthy person's lifestyle. The question remains as to uh, you know what time to sleep and what time to get up and like that. Well, there are various theories, but what comes up is an average of about seven hours, right? As I said, and the sleep is governed by a particular hormone in the brain called as melatonin. 
maybe some of you have heard this word melatonin right so melatonin starts getting released in the body at 9 pm rises through the night and then by 4 am it starts declining as per the biological clock right that's a perfect time to sleep 9 am you go to sleep 9 pm you go to sleep get up by 4 o'clock that may be ideal many people cannot be able to do ideal but stay close to the ideal if 9:30 4:30 cycle 10 pm 5 am cycle but try to remain close to that and sleep at a fixed time get up at a fixed time and that really really helps <clears throat> so that's the second principle let's move on I'll go a little deeper now let's talk about food water <clears throat> and things like that <laughs> nutrition right so uh let's remember to eat food as medicine if we don't do that we may have to eat medicine as food you were surprised i had a patient of mine 2 3 years back who brought a list of medicines he was taking from his mother doctor and there were 22 drugs he was taking per day <laughs> and he came to me not for consultation he said sir i just wanted to cut down my medicines that's all <laughs> don't really think yes just bring it down to a level which i can manage in my life somebody has given me 22 drugs to take i just can't handle this <laughs> so uh what our food should we eat well before we talk about food i want to talk about something about corona when they dissected out uh, through post mortem studies of our unfortunate victims of corona in spain italy and uk they found something very interesting very important which helped us to understand what we call as the pathophysiology of the coronavirus <clears throat> damage in the body and what came up was very interesting because the virus enters as we know from the nose goes to the throat and down the trachea into the bronchus and then ultimately into the lungs it damages the lining and creates what is called as a inflammatory response the body starts attacking the virus with inflammation and as inflammation starts rising especially people who have got poor immune systems the immune system is not able to control the inflammation and inflammation becomes so intensified that it prevents gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide it damages the cells further and leads to thrombus formation or clot formation in the lungs or the heart or the brain so they may die of thrombolism in the lungs or a stroke or a heart attack now this is important because we'll talk we need about need a discussion in a few minutes from now <clears throat> that so clot formation and the release of inflammatory material what is technically called as cytokines Uh, it is it is called a cytokine storm a huge amount of storm of inflammatory substances is released in the lungs which damages the lungs and damages and causing cause, causes clot so basically inflammation is the uh, basic pathology of coronavirus and for that matter inflammation of a low grade nature is responsible for all degenerative diseases whether it is diabetes whether it is alzheimers whether it is ulcerative colitis or crohn's disease or cancer all these diseases have impaired inflammatory mechanisms in the body and therefore eating food we should be able to create a balanced inflammatory response of the body is going to be useful so of course the meat diet is not the out for us because that causes a lot of inflammation <clears throat> but even as vegetarians we may not eat meat but we devotees do tend to have quite a bit of times on healthy eating habits right and especially when we are we are uh, eating a lot of junk food we are eating a lot of uh, sugary foods rich. right or very rich rich foods or we are eating very refined foods refined carbohydrates a lot of maida a lot of white rice and a lot of you know cakes and pastries a lot of sugar flavored drinks juices uh, these are all very very highly inflammatory things that which are which are there so on the on the other hand thinking like whole grain nuts uh, things which are do that so I, without going to details maybe you can just plug in this word in your mind inflammatory foods and anti inflammatory foods and make some research and that will make you help get a better understanding of what foods to eat because directly anti inflammatory foods are able to reduce inflammation in the body and bring about less degeneration right Uh, it's important to talk in in these times about uh, supplements also because uh, not all that we want to do into our bodies in terms of putting good nutrition and body needs a lot of good nutrition uh, to keep it very healthy and going 
So not all of will come through our food. We know the food quality has gone down uh, because the soiling, the, the farming techniques have gone down and a lot of things are, the soil is depleted very badly, the top soil is gone. Uh, so we don't really have such nutritious food like our forefathers. So we are, it may not appear very palatable, but we may have to depend a lot these days on supplements to do what food cannot give us. So a few, a, a few words about supplements. Uh, what supplements to take? People keep asking this question. Sir, kya khana chahiye, kya nahi khana chahiye, kaun sa lena chahiye, kaun sa vitamin lena chahiye, bataiye. Right? So, I would like to talk about five vitamins. Vitamin A, prepare for the lining of the mucosal lining to make it strong and give it integrity. B complex, especially vitamin B6 or pyridoxin. Vitamin C, I think all of us have already heard a lot of vitamin C. We all know we take avla candies and avla powders and Things like that, we take citrus juices, right? But you need about 1000 milligram and above to jack up your immune system. <clears throat> so take vitamin C in good amounts. It's antioxidant in nature and it produces a lot of cells called as NK or natural killer cells of the body. Vitamin D is a sunlight vitamin. We all know that. And lockdown or no lockdown, we are all always locked down in one sense because we hardly go to the sun, right? So about 2000 units of vitamin D per day or 60K per month would be a good dose. And it has been proved that people who were sun exposed were less affected in Corona than people who were not sun exposed. So A, B6, C, D, and vitamin E all act as a cocktail to bring about antioxidant effect in the body. We need something more. We need five types of minerals at least, of the many minerals which are required in the body. The top one of that is magnesium. We require magnesium, manganese, zinc, selenium, and copper, right? Of course, <clears throat> you cannot take a tons and tons of that, but it requires in, in proportionate amounts. But it's worth talking about magnesium for a while. Two lines on magnesium. Magnesium is nature's most powerful anti-inflammatory cation mineral. Magnesium is required for enzymatic actions and there are at least 1,000 enzymes which depend on magnesium for its function. So huge, it's probably the largest amount of enzymes depending on, on, on magnesium. And therefore when magnesium is not there, uh, all cell functions go down. It is required among the seven of the eight steps required to manufacture the water molecule of life which gives life to our body, that is ATP, right? So magnesium is very, very important to take about 200 to 400 milligrams per day at least. Glycinate. Yeah, Mag magnesium glycinate, there are various salts, uh, magnesium chloride, others. Magnesium glycinate is one of the best salts to take. So we recommend about 400 milligrams of magnesium glycinate per day at least to take. That will really be useful. Plus, as I said, other this thing. <clears throat> and uh, uh, one thing which we can also take is probiotics. Again, these are not corona specific. Please remember, I'm talking about corona specificities. I'm talking about the long term uh, immunity management. So probiotics uh, uh, come from dahi and uh, and yogurt, right? So we can take probiotics which contain lactobacilli, bifidobacteria, because please remember, 80% of immunity is not in our brain or in our heart or our kidneys or our lungs. It is in our gut. 80% of immunity cells are in our gut. Therefore, the gut decides what immunological response will happen to the immunological stimulation of the body. So Ayurveda, Ayurveda is right and modern science corroborates that most diseases start in the gut. If you want to improve your, uh, your oral health, work on your gut. And a good way to do that is to add friendly bacteria to improve the uh, internal milieu by taking probiotics. Let's move on a little further. Uh, we would like to talk about the fourth topic that is uh, the tonic of good exercise, right? Prabhupada said he used to walk and then we couldn't walk, he took massage. Prabhupada said massage is like, he's like passive wrestling. <laughs> so that was his exercise because he couldn't fight with anybody or do dumbbells at that age. But he took massage and that makes a lot of sense because you squeeze all the muscles. So basically, we all suffer from the sitting disease as professors, doctors, and uh, IT professionals. We sit in one place and we work, right? And therefore, the whole system actually slumps down 
because it was designed for movement. The body was designed for movement. Right? We are part of the Hare Krishna movement. We should not stop. We should keep on. We should keep on moving. <laughs> movement is life. A dead body cannot move. So you know, if we sit sit too long, probably we are going closer to our death. Right? So we must move. We must move a lot and sweat it out. So uh, various yoga sans can be done. Pranayams can be done. Exercise can be done. It tones up the blood circulation. It tones up after even just one exercise burst of 15-20 minutes. You immediately increase the white blood cells in your body. Right? That's how powerful exercises exercises are in boosting up immune systems. So spend some time. If you don't have any exercise to perform or yoga sana, then simple one is to perform is uh, Surya Namaskar. And whatever capacity you can, maybe start with five and build it up to more. If you don't have any other pranayam to do, then you can do Anjali Milam Pranayam. Very simple, anyone can do that, right? So please uh, uh, embrace. And uh, we are not even dancing too much now. Even Kirtan, because Kirtan Mela means you just sit and do Kirtan. So we are not even dancing in Kirtan. So all those things, the days are seem to be going, and where we should dance so much for three, four hours in the Kirtan. That's not happening. So we need to do some exercise, correct? And of course, uh, uh, last but not the least is, uh, as I said, we are going to talk from physical level and we are going to move on to psychological level. because we are in a situation where we also need our minds we need the psychological stability psychological resilience or what you can call a psychological immunity so i like to request vishaka to speak a few words on psychological resilience and immunity during uh, these trying times yeah, like as we were discussing about the external factors which affect our body due to this difficult situation so many factors have come which are going to be affecting our mind as well right we are seeing right now in the world how things are going is not in a good direction there is so much increase in unemployment people are left right and center losing jobs there is financial instability insecure future is going to i mean nobody knows what's going to happen in the future so many things are happening and so many changes happening it's becoming very difficult for people to be able to adapt to these changes and we know that there is a deep connection between the body and the mind right we know it's it's not a separate thing that the body is separate and mind is separate so many of the patients who go to the hospital they come sometimes with physical symptoms some was somebody came they having a backache and you know they did so many tests they did mri and ct scan everything was normal but upon probing a little more deeper we came to know that you know the whole pain was as a result that she had undergone divorce 6 months back so because of the psychological trauma that they went through she came up with a backache which is a physical symptom uh, caused due to a psychological factor that had affected her life somebody came with uh, tuberculosis you know and then when you know uh, going deeper into their life came to know that he lost his job so that stress that was causing him it manifested in the form of you know tuberculosis so we see this there's a deep correlation between the body and the mind and a healthy mind is equal to a healthy body that's a logical understanding and the brain is a very very important part of the immune system hmm? because as we said the mind affects the body so many times you ask people you know how are you doing prabhu so some people will give an answer Oh, you know, this is not going okay, and you know that is not going okay. The weather is not okay. The job is not okay. My boss is not okay. My wife is not okay. My husband is not okay. You get a very complaining type of response from them, and you will see that those people who have this type of uh, negative, uh, cribbing type of mentality, mindset, the toxic mindset which they have, that becomes a you know good portion of the life they spend in ill health. they have bp problems and they have diabetes and something or the other will keep happening to them because simply because of their nature of negativity in whatever they go through and there are some people you ask them prabhu how are you doing oh i am doing great and actually they may be suffering uh, you know a terminal disease like we know the example of our bhakti tirth maharaj he was on his deathbed and still he was feeling i would not want to exchange my situation with anybody so you know such people they they always feel exude so much of positivity that we are completely okay so there is constantly we are being faced with this uh, choice that whether i want to have positive thinking or negative thinking and that will determine our immunity 
so recently in india they have been relaying this mahabharat series which had happened few years back and it has people it has occupied people's minds a lot so we were also watching the particular episode of the after the gambling match when the pandavas were banished to the forest and you know i was trying to really uh, re i mean obviously whatever we hear or read we try to relate it with our cu current situation in life so i was thinking about a particular thought process which i would just wanted to share with all of you that when the pandavas were banished for 12 years in the forest and 13th year of uh, being an incognito at that time duryodhan was still not satisfied with what he had made the pandavas go through i mean what type of a person duryodhan is i mean what type of a mentality he had he had all the wealth he had a very powerful body he had the richest of palaces he was eating the best of foods and yet his mentality was so toxic hmm? he was always unhappy he was always insecure he was always envious he was always angry and frustrated he was stressed out even though he was living with hundred of his brothers and in all the comforts why whereas we see that the pandavas they were living in the forest they had nothing no comforts of living they were eating whatever fruits and roots were available obviously you know frugally eating in a poor way however they were always very very peaceful they were happy they were always feeling secure in the shelter of krishna which they were experiencing and they were enjoying the togetherness of the five brothers and the wife living together you know the joyful experience so what happened is that duryodhan being un dissatisfied with the torture he had done to the pandavas he decided to go to the forest where they were staying the pandavas were staying and add fuel to uh, to the fire by teasing the pandavas so he goes there and he tries to pass ill comments on them and at that time a group of gandharvas attack duryodhan and duryodhan is bound up and made a captive and that time some people go and give a message to yudhishthir that you know such and such thing has happened to duryodhan please come and save him so yudhishthir immediately tells arjun and bhim that go and save duryodhan and both the brothers look at each other say who duryodhan the one who is the cause of our being in the forest right now you are telling us to go and save him and that point yudhishthir made a very beautiful point which we need to uh, understand at this particular point which is relevant to our subject which we are discussing today yudhishthir said that amongst ourselves we may be fighting it's a family fight but when outside forces attack us we have to somehow or the other get united only then we will be able to protect our family right so similarly today we are being attacked from outside with pandemic disease as we said unemployment financial crisis lack of resources are there so much uncertainty cyclones are there you know some places locusts are flying swarms of them are just coming and what not is still to come so how to get the strength to face all this and much more which might be in store for us which we are not aware of right did any of us know at the beginning of 2020 that we are going to be faced with this type of a situation we didn't know because uncertainty is the highlight of material existence you really never know what's going to happen when it is going to happen so how will we be able to face this unless we are strengthened uh, you know we have a strong internal immunity so when external forces attack we need to strengthen our internal forces to increase our immunity to fight these things right as you give the example of the pandavas because they were having such a good congenial relationship among themselves they didn't feel any calamity as calamity huh? so ram and sita while they were 14 years banished 13 years of their life of the forest life went very well except the last year when she was kidnapped when there was separation they went through the pain so again this is this difficult time which we all are going through it is time for increasing the resilience of our mind with during the dealings with our near and dear ones hmm? if we share good relationships at our house it will become very easy even if we have no money we will still be able to be yes. happy yes. if we will have less money we will be happy if we have 
uh, you know employment will be happy if there is no job we will still feel the support of our near and dear ones so even though there might be situations in the past where we have not got along where we have had major difference of opinions in our families but at this time if we can decide to make this change and come together on a more united platform on a more harmonious level it will definitely help us to face this stress stressful situation that is that is there right so we are talking that during this life the, during this lockdown so many varieties of situations happened between people hmm? because everybody was at home right there was more time to love each other but equally there was more time to fight with each other because we have never experienced so much of time so there was too much of stepping on each other's feet so there was much more opportunity to get angry huh there were opportunity more opportunity to complain also there was more opportunity to appreciate hmm? we could complain about the different mistakes which each other made because we are seeing it more closely day and night and there was also opportunity to appreciate the sacrifices that everybody has been making for each other on a family level what husband goes through what wife goes through we could appreciate that so we need to understand that if we really really want to help and save each other more than or along in fact along with all these supplements and the exercises and the vitamins which we will be taking the right amount of sleep and the food we need to boost each other's emotional immunity if we will be able to do that we will be much more well equipped to face this situation of our life so we need we, we have to be more aware that if i cause stress at home if i get repeatedly angry i get abusive sometimes i'm using such bad words which are not worthy of a devotee hmm? there is domestic violence if i do because i feel in the four walls who's going to see the way i'm treating my children and my wife who's going to see all that if i what words i use i may be uh, you know beating up somebody who's going to see fault finding is there if i'm complaining what am i actually doing i am actually suppressing and reducing the immunity of my own family members right on one side we are trying to give supplements to boost up the immunity but by giving them this sort of treatment i am actually adding to their sadness i am adding to their depression i am adding to their anxiety their insecurity their fear which they will go through and trust us all these factors make them more likely to get diseased and pick up the bug huh we become more vulnerable to this type of disease so this is a different dimension which we need to understand you know and opposite to that if we remain happy right a happy person only can make others happy if i am not happy i cannot make somebody else happy so if i remain happy and make my family members happy add the vitamin h in the family which is what the vitamin of humor huh? some humor is there in the family nowadays so many jokes are being passed around it's not that people are making a joke of the covid situation but they are just trying to lighten the environment that you know something some distressor is there whatever it is some innocent jokes are being passed around because humor lightens up the environment to be a little more jovial be a little more appreciative for small small things they may not be very significant things that people might be doing for each other but we can do little more of that lend some helping hand uh, respect their sacrifices basically have some peace at home a peaceful mind hmm? a peaceful mind will always be having a strong immunity than a disturbed mind all right let us respect each other's individuality and give them space usually we try to you know put our own view points on each other that everybody should behave like this and nobody should do like that individually so let us not judge and all this will tremendously boost our immunity and the immunity of our loved ones and in turn they will remain healthy even in the midst of disease right even in the, so in simple words you know if you just had to conclude we just need to say that let us decide to be kind and just not to hurt anybody hurt by mind thought action in no way because we love to quote this every time it's better to be kind than to be right 
usually the uh, problems in family life come because we want to prove ourselves right that the way i think is right what i say is right the way i do things is the best way to do things and the whole fight is the ego clash between you know the the you know fight to be known that i am right i can never go wrong but it's more important to be kind right so you know if we understand that the unity and the harmony of our family bonds at this particular moment and much more is a more powerful vaccine against the damage created by covid so if we could you know think from this angle also how we can increase our immunity it will help on uh, in, it will help by giving an integrated approach along with the medical side the emotional side also can be catered to yeah that was that was interesting and wonderful so uh, we want to uh, you know want to a little bit of the more subtle level uh, the last point how to improve our spiritual immunity and i think many people many devotees are on the zoom attending lectures doing courses and things like that <clears throat> but i would like to end with a small small significant story in prabhu's life that is a vaishnav who got initiated by prabhupad in on radhastami day in delhi <clears throat> and uh, uh, he was taking his vows of diksha and he came up to prabhupad and Prabhupada asked him, "So, what are the four negative principles?" And he answered them. As he was answering them, his face came close, quite close to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, "So, you did not brush your teeth." So, actually, he said, uh, "Infection," because this devotee had uh, some oral infection, mouth infection for 15 days. wasn't able to brush, and he was he was doing only gargling with salt water. So he said, "Infection." And Prabhupada said, "Hmm." And he was beads and said, "Chant 16 rounds." the name is atma tatva das right so his mind got the connection i am infected in my prescription there my disease my prescription is of course to now to chant the names the next day being initiated you are very enthusiastic you wanted to serve prabhupad personally his bapu and he was finding prabhupad prabhupad looked at him and made a comment material life means infection not just corona infection or bacteria infection or this infection or tb infection what is material life itself is infection we infected by the disease of maya the disease of forgetting krishna bhuliya tumare the first step is bhuliya tumare we forget krishna samsara asiya we take shelter of the samsara this world and then pay nana yatha yatha right we you do so many you pay the price of coming here and taking shelter of this world pay nana yatha yatha means all sorts of problems we that's the price we are paying for staying here so we lifted the skurta and then he said <coughs> that you have each you each it and you feel satisfied and you each more and it <coughs> it scratch it, it it is more and you scratch it you feel satisfied and it is more and now you cannot find more satisfaction it causes blood right so probhat said the ultimate solution is eniche aushadi maya nashi baro lagi harinama mahamantra lautme magi yes we have to take shelter of uh, the holy teachings of shila prabhupad instead of the holy name is not different from krishna himself instead of the holy devotees were empowered by the lord right and take shelter of the entire process which prabhu has given us and then yad gatva na nivartante dhamma rama mama we want to put an complete end not just corona not just all these things we have to put an end to all these problems once and for all right so no more of this vaccine drugs supplements nothing you want to go back to our beloved lord Was waiting for us in standing memorial, and we have been neglecting him. We've been, you know, <clears throat> denying him, right? We will turn our face towards his lotus feet and take shelter of him, and return back home, back to Godhead. That is the ultimate eternal life of eternal immunity in Krishna's holy service. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very.
Thanks, <laughs> Ndiari. Thank you very much for such a wonderful and all-rounded and multifaceted class on the practical aspects as well as the spiritual, the mental, the intellectual. It's a, such a holistic thing. It's, you can't separate one from the other. And uh, the message, uh, is, I think it's very important. We're feeling that, you know, we need to reevaluate, reprioritize our lives and, uh, and engage uh, more intelligently with uh, all this uh, wonderful wisdom that we have at hand. So uh, thank you so much for bringing to attention these, uh, that it's, you know, spiritual life is so holistic. It's not just, uh, you know, uh, one, one facet to it. Um, so there's well-being is, has, has so many aspects. So uh, this is a wonderful message. Uh, Prabhuji Mataji, if you don't mind, we can uh, have a couple of questions. Is that okay for a few minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a few minutes of questions. Is that all right? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So uh, Vijay Krishna Prabhu from Portugal uh, has a question. Go ahead, Vijay Krishna Prabhu. Okay. If not, uh... Prabhu, if you can unmute yourself, yes. Go ahead. Now we can hear you. Uh, Hare Krishna. Yes, we can hear you, Prabhu. Go ahead. Yes, uh, Dwarkadish Prabhu, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Please, please ask your question. Yes, my question is related to food. And uh, one of the biggest problems for the preachers of the Hare Krishna movement is that when we ask people to stop meat eating, uh, egg eating, and fish eating, uh, they, uh, their uh, counter argument is that if they stop to eat these foodstuffs, where, where will they find the nutrients for them to, to remain healthy? Uh, so uh, uh, it's very difficult for, for us, at least here in Portugal, to convince people to change uh, their uh, the diet because of this argument they 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 feel like afraid that that in vegetar lacto vegetarian diet it would it would be very difficult for them to find the all the nutrients they need to to remain healthy what would you respond to these people yeah so thank you for the question uh, this myth about protein and nutrition has been there in the world since the 1980s when the protein uh, uh, theory was launched uh, very strongly by the meat lobby to order to sell more meat. And that has hung around uh, in the last 40 years. It has not died down. And only little, uh, much later did they find that the incidence of uh, cardiovascular disease and uh, colonic diseases started increasing that they started telling us that you need little less protein than what they had recommended earlier. Now, there is a lot of research uh, which people are unaware because the mainstream medicine people uh, are still not uh, putting forth the scientific data in a such a strong manner. And therefore, the old theory of high protein meat diet lingers. People are not being made aware. Their response to this, what you are ask, asking, is a sign only of ignorance rather than arrogance, <laughs> that they are not aware that actually, uh, in simple words, we say that the strongest animal in the world is an elephant. Uh, the fastest uh, uh, animal is, of course, a, a one of the, of the horse. And the biggest uh, uh, muscle builder is hippopotamus, right? <laughs> and they all are pure vegetarians, right? So that's a strong indicator that vegetarian food has all that it needs. Uh, the glory of uh, sprouts, uh, sprouts are much more protein than uh, what uh, meat contains. In fact, uh, I didn't talk about this... Uh, this time so much, but uh, meat is proved to be what is called as an inflammatory diet. So if you if you if you do some search on inflammatory diet, you'll find that all red meat, all chicken, including their favorite eggs, uh, are uh, inflammatory in nature. Eggs contain omega six fatty acids, which are proved to be you know inflammatory in nature. Now, on the other hand, we have vegetarian sources like flax seeds and chia seeds, and things like which are rich in omega three fatty acids, which are anti-inflammatory in nature. Right. So. <clears throat> Uh, uh, it is a fact that people who are uh, uh, vegans or those who are like vegetarian have less bills. Um, there are less cardiovascular problems in, 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 their, in their life. 
so it what you are what they are saying is not supported by science at all and therefore if they are scientific they will probably be able to see that there is truth in what we are talking about if they say rigid they are rigid to their own theories of course then they have a problem but if they open up to newer light of scientific knowledge then they can they can be changed they can be they can see the truth yeah. uh, uh, yes prabhu just one more thing uh, uh, how dangerous is uh, fish eating well uh, fish in the, in the same category uh, i'm speaking as a doctor now so on the on the on the medical side i know that fish oil is good for health in certain regards but even though that may be true scientifically speaking they need to know that the fish comes from waters which is actually polluted right the fish per se may have medical value of course we don't eat because we are vaishnavas we believe in the ahimsa theory but even if they eat that uh, for medical reasons they should know that the fish is not coming from a pure source industrial wastes are put in billions of tons in the in the seas right and therefore even if the fish has good properties when they take that particular type of food then the fish actually becomes toxic and carcinogenic so they should know that Uh, thank you very much prabhu for your answer hari krishna thank you prabhu there's a couple of questions from the chat you mentioned manganese what is the importance of manganese manganese uh, is also i will be, be very, very brief i don't want to take discussion into the medical medical field but manganese is required for the production of a particular type of intracellular uh, antioxidant called as glutathione So glutathione is uh, there in every cell, and a lot of toxins are produced, and manganese helps manufacture that. Plus, it is required for a lot of endocrinal functions. Most of the metallic metals, what we call this, ultimately a metal, a mineral, right, are acting as cofactors for enzymatic reaction. An enzyme doesn't work alone, but needs a catalytic involvement of a copper or a zinc or a manganese or magnesium to actually activate the uh, the enzyme. so activation enzymes depends on that so manganese is a cofactor for many many such enzymes including the manufacture of glutathione thank you prabhu there is another question uh, vitamin d3 in the market most of them are from animal sources what vitamin d sources would you recommend and advise i do not know so much in uh, uh, in america but uh, i had been to the devotees houses and i saw there is a company called uh, deva d e v a deva but there are vegan sources now i saw devotees on their uh, eating tables dining tables they had supplements of vitamin d with vegetarian sources so i think we do have choices now though in america they may be difficult but if you look for them uh, we will have we will have we have options now we have in fact all vitamins are now available with a green dot uh, as far as i understand uh, people who are looking for them there is a market If there's a market, then people are going to give. So the market is there. So the supply also is there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Apurva Prabhu, the proper disciple who has joined us, and he had a question. Apurva Prabhu, go ahead. Hi, right, Krishna Prabhu. I just wanted to say this has been one of the most enlivening and informative classes I've been seeing on Zoom. You guys did a great job. Really wonderful, especially Madhuji's point about. Um, familiarity breeds contempt sometimes we see of course most of us are are in lockdown and we have to stay in the same built room and uh, as our wife or the family so how do we um how do we check the familiarity breeds contempt situation and um minimize this damage i i understand from what you said that it's it's actually very uh, lethal when one um you, you know uh negative. negative energy how to of course of chanting is always helpful but any tips on that for being kind and remaining in that condition without yes i think you know what i mean right yeah yes prabhu this question a similar question was asked in one of our bhagavatam classes to ranath swami and he gave an answer that familiarity breeds contempt when krishna is not in the center but if it's a krishna centered life then familiarity doesn't breed contempt and we had a wonderful example of dinatarini mata ji and uh, yamuna prabhu right both of them for so many years they were staying together being 
women also together usually we find you know that two women staying together would there might be a lot of difference of opinions and you know so many different views and they will never agree on the same thing but whenever we interacted with them they stayed with us at the hospital for so many years and we asked the same question to them also that suppose some opportunity comes that you know we have to stay together on such close counters day and night we are serving together we are sleeping together we are eating together so doesn't it uh, familiarity doesn't cause different you know clashes so they also repeated the same thing that when krishna is the center krishna service is the center then it you know it is a different thing than familiarity on a different level so right even happens so basically uh, prabhu uh, yeah, yeah. You, uniting on the higher principle because at the lower principle differences will be there and the differences are actually have in fact natural because we are by nature all different people so the diversity will be magnified if you only take glacium at that level but once you raise the level of to the level of krishna consciousness you find a very common uniting factor which is either prabhu pad or the lord right that we are here together to serve prabhu pad we are here together to serve krishna we are here together to serve krishna so once you raise the relation to that level then that is a common you are serving krishna i am serving krishna so we have a common focal point and therefore we can somehow make rough edges more smoother because we are all both here in the marriage relationship for the same purpose and i guess we can say something about being nice and kind to keep that in the forefront be nice correct. and correct. kind correct then because we're both yeah in the same boat thank you <laughs> thank you very much it was excellent hari krishna thank you prabhu and uh, all of those of us who know apura prabhu and mother kamalini for for some years we know that they are actually the epitome of niceness and kindness <laughs> oh, yeah. and, uh, and they are uh, you know we need, we need your blessings prabhu the role models for us the devotees your role models you have to go thank you um uh, there's one more question if we can handle uh, nandana yeah. chai prabhu asks shila prabhupad only slept very little uh, and how do you reconcile that because uh, it's important for us to sleep the right amount but prabhupad hardly even slept so uh, please uh, shed some light on that uh, difference and how we oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. prabhupad hardly ever slept you, that is a question yeah um the the, uh, the understanding i have is after prabhupad contacted the paralytic stroke in 1967 in new york and he actually lost his sleep he sleep got disturbed because i'm sure that stroke uh, was affecting his uh, brain to a certain extent and on the material platform he was affected but prabhupad saw that as not a disadvantage of having lost his valuable sleep but he took it to advantage by even <clears throat> using the extra time which would now have in a broken sleep situation to do krishna's work right <clears throat> i believe prabhupad is a superhuman because uh, for uh, for somebody who sleep deprived according to medical science for so many years of his life for at least 11 years 66 to 77 if somebody slow deep sleep deprived someone who is traveling so much in jet lag you know all over the world 14 times <clears throat> that person has to be someone who is working not on the physical platform he is a person who is actually directly empowered and we know that he is what we may consider as a satyavesha right otherwise it is for a no normal mortal to sleep 4 hours in a day for 11 year for 11 years is is uh, unsustainable by any medical standards and if robert had got his non normal sleep probably on the other hand on the other corollary if he had got normal sleep and then probably would live for another 10 years in this world <laughs> thank you prabhu uh, just one more okay so the importance of collagen is collagen an important thing in our diet collagen and then collagen yeah collagen Colla what collagen is basically uh, you know something is required for the manufacturing of tendons and tissues which cause healing <clears throat> so collagen is uh, not something which we have to eat uh, it's required for joint repair because the cartilage is made of collagen <clears throat> like when the cartilage gets worn up our knee joint gets worn up so we can manufacture collagen through nutritional supplements which are there which can help manufacture fresh collagen in the body we don't have to really eat the collagen because all collagen mostly will come from animal sources thank you and then uh, should we drink milk daily as adults is that recommended <laughs> i 
I would like to uphold Prabhupada's teachings in this regard, even though milk is under a huge fire of controversy and <laughs> there are lobbies <laughs> of people who talk about milk in a different way. But I would have only two considerations as far as milk is concerned. One is <clears throat> we, should coming from, we should be coming from mother cow who is a protected mother, who protected this thing, what you call as ahimsa milk. And second, preferable, preferable to have A2 milk. Yeah. Right? If it is preferably A2 milk uh, and it is coming from a protected cow, I would uphold Prabhupada's uh, teachings that milk is uh, adds to sattva guna, which we so badly need in Rajaguna infected Kali Yuga. <laughs> Thank you very much, Prabhu. Okay, so that's the uh, we are going to end over here. I'm going to request Nilmani Prabhu uh, to give the final words. Uh, Nilmani Prabhu, go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Garkadish Prabhu. Wish I come you. That was really very, very practical, down to earth. I just want to try to recall those five principles you gave, right? And maybe you can correct me. Um, the first was you uh, kind of uh, regulation, right? Regulation and balance. Second one was um, sleep, sufficient sleep. Third one was food, food and controlling our diet and accuracy of making sure we eat the right things. The fourth one was exercise, right? And then the fifth one, Vishakha Mataji explained so nicely was keeping our mind and mental state in balance and healthy and maintaining a sense of humor and, and uh, so forth. So. You're muted, Prabhu. I can't hear you. So uh, maybe Madan Gopal, you can also unmute them. So, but there was a wonderful five principles that we can all remember so nicely, and it was wonderfully presented from a spiritual perspective. So as we all start slowly going back out into the world from our lockdown situation, hopefully we can remember these and think about them consciously. I can speak for one, and Dwarkadish Prabhu knows that my morning walks that I do for an hour or two every day is what keeps me going. So I mean, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> and when Dwarkadish Prabhu comes, he goes with me. So I, I missed him this year to go on my morning walk with him. So We are feeling so nice to have connected with all of you. Yashoda Dilal Prabhu, Shiradika, Gaur Kumar Prabhu, Parikshit, and Braj Bhakti Mataji and all. Just to see you all, Kaivalya Prabhu is there. You can see some of you. Thank you so much. Feeling nice to have your virtual darshan. We are seeing yeah. Jadav Swami Maharaj also. Jadav Swami Maharaj. Would you like to add anything, Maharaj, to uh, any of the points they made? I'm sorry? Yes. Would you like to add anything? Um, no. Dwarkadish Prabhu is my personal doctor. I recommend him highly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marge. Um, So uh, thank you all once again for joining this morning. Uh, so uh, in just about a minute, you can uh, just unmute yourself and say a quick Hari Bol. A reminder, tonight at 8 p.m., we have a special class with Bhakti Marj Swami. And then tomorrow evening, we have uh, 6 p.m. Uh, class by Anand Vrindavan Mataji and Bhajavi Hari Prabhu. So please join tonight at 8 p.m. and then tomorrow at 6 p.m. Thank you very much. Dwarkadish Prabhu, Vishakha Priya Mataji. And uh, if anybody would like to say a quick Hari Bol and good night to uh, our wonderful speakers, you can do so now. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare, Hare, Hare Krishna. Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you for a wonderful class. Hare Krishna. Come back again. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Lots of love and support to go. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 <laughs>